Everyone struggles, but people that have the rare INFJ personality sometimes look like they struggle more than the next person. Their NF component, which revolves around intuition and feeling, drives them to constantly pursue high goals and idealistic solutions, while their J component, which revolves around judging, motivates them to look for ways to achieve those objectives through action and effort. This seemingly contradictory combination can lead to great success and accomplishment, but it can also cause folks who are usually referred to as visionaries to feel unsatisfied and restless. Here are 10 confessions that every INFJ would likely make. Number 1. I want to be left alone most of the time. INFJs love their friends and family a lot. Their life would most likely lack the meaning or purpose they desperately desire without these relationships. But if they were to be totally honest, they just want to be left alone most of the time. Left alone to read, write, watch their favorite shows, or just sit and stare vacantly while their mind wanders. They choose quality over quantity when it comes to people time. Even though they enjoy being around people, they typically have the strongest feelings for other people when those people are not physically present. It is only when they are alone and reflecting on their thoughts and feelings that they understand how much others mean to them. Number 2. My constant need to improve my life sometimes feels like a curse. INFJs are perfectionists. As a result, their life is a never-ending endeavor of self-improvement. They are never satisfied or stagnant. They are already thinking about the next level as soon as they reach a new one. The good news is that they can transform their lives in a matter of years and become better individuals. However, their persistent demand for development can be taxing and depressing, particularly when they do not see the desired improvements. They occasionally wish they could be comfortable with the status quo. That would undoubtedly make things easier. They also become extremely disappointed in themselves when they let others down. Of course, they mentally understand that no one else can be flawless, but that doesn't mean they're not going to try. Number 3. I always see the best in people. In the majority of their relationships in life, both romantic and platonic, INFJs are known to be selfless. They have idealistic beliefs and tend to see the best in people. Even though every fiber of their being tells them not to, they enjoy holding out for people. Because of the belief that they can make the relationship work and change it for the better, INFJs can stay in relationships for 10 years even if things aren't working well. They'd make comments like, if I just made an effort to try harder, maybe we might be the happy couple we were at first if I just said or did something different, up until the point when they understand they have been deluding themselves all along. Number 4. I'm too busy taking care of people and I mostly always forget to take care of myself. In addition to putting others before themselves in relationships, INFJs sometimes neglect their own needs. They can entirely forget about themselves until they realize they are empty and worn out because they are so busy trying to do everything for everyone else. Then, in order to recharge, INFJs will frequently need to block out as much stimuli as they can. They simply need to relax for a few days, a week, or as long as they require. People who are accustomed to them being around may find this behavior difficult to understand when they just sort of disappear and become hermits. Number 5. I daydream a lot. INFJ spend a great deal of their time daydreaming. When the outside world gets a little overwhelming at times, they have the ability to create rich inner lives to withdraw to. They can get through some of the most challenging situations in life by being able to focus on their thoughts and dreams. They don't seem to be the kind of folks who would feel lonely or alone. Now, the issue that comes with having a strong inner life is that, occasionally, even if you can clearly envision a happy and flawless future, you're faced with the harsh facts of reality. This is one of those situations where INFJ's extreme idealism might cause problems. Number 6. I want to help as many people as possible. INFJs are obsessed with helping people, and it is not surprising that people like Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, Oprah, Martin Luther King Jr., and Mother Teresa make the list of notable INFJs. INFJs can make an effort to make others happy. They live a selfless lifestyle as a result. However, because they don't often do it for their own benefit, they may not be aware of this trait. 
INFJ personalities are all about making other people happy. Because they find themselves meeting more demands than they can handle, advocates frequently experience burnout sooner than other people. Number 7. I want the absolute best. I can't afford to settle. INFJs are looking for the one, but maybe not in a traditional sense of a romantic partner, although that is still valid, rather in a sense of a life purpose. INFJs appear to be always searching for a job or career that makes them feel like they are making a difference, helping others, or leaving a lasting legacy. They feel like they are constantly burdened with a glorious purpose, but occasionally they are unable to identify this purpose or know where to look for it. So if they get hired for a new position and they discover that they don't enjoy it or have any sense of fulfillment, they will probably find something else to do. Instead of pursuing something that doesn't elicit any feeling from them, or worse, limits their potential for personal and spiritual growth, they'd prefer to run away and look for something else. But it comes with its own set of issues, such as not having a steady source of income, and this may put them in a difficult decision-making situation. Number 8. I'm an optimist and a realist all at once, and quite often, this is the key to my success. INFJs have an optimistic outlook on life and think they can achieve happiness and success, but they are aware that these things need effort. The INFJ is frequently still at work long after every other light in the building has been turned off. Even when they leave the office early, they almost never just Netflix and chill. Most of the time, it's because they believe they can function more effectively at home, which is an introvert's haven. Yes, they have a tendency to become workaholics, and yes, their loved ones have to occasionally yank them away from their most recent cause. The truth is, they are driven to realize their goals and are fully aware that diligence is the key. Number 9. Sometimes I need your help to enjoy the present moment. Yes, INFJs should be commended for their diligence and thoughtfulness, but there are occasions when they also need to be disciplined. They occasionally lose motivation, since taking on the entire world is a massive undertaking. Their relentless pursuit of excellence and exhausting work ethic occasionally confine them. They miss out on the serenity found in the babbling of a child's laugh or a family pillow fight, along with the beauty of butterflies in flight. So they need someone to help bring them back. They yearn for those rare, thoughtless, blissful moments when everything just feels perfect. They need help in the moment to see that, in spite of a world that needs fixing, some moments in time are perfect just the way they are. Number 10. You can often find me behind a book. If you're looking for an INFJ or studying one to learn more about what makes this unusual personality tick, head straight for the books on their nightstand, in their office, or on their Kindle. Their books are their lifeboat, and they use them almost the same way the patients use prescription drugs. They are never totally satisfied with who they are or how their world currently is, and they are constantly searching for the answers to life's major issues. From self-help books that help them overcome emotional and psychological problems or strengthen relationships, to classic literature which they feel contains irrational amounts of knowledge about themselves and the world, books serve them to satiate their never-ending thirst for knowledge. Also, they sometimes use them as an escape. They free themselves from their inner critic and never-ending fix-the-world-to-do list by stepping into another person's skin. Books are their teachers, psychologists, and vacations all in one. So, what do you think about these points? Let us know down in the comments section. Also, make sure to watch this video in the link, and if you like our content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. On the screen now should be another good video worth watching, so click on that video and we will see you in the next one.